right, let's go and look at another one. Um, ooh, bearings. So this one says from city A to city B, a plane flies 6,500 miles at a bearing of 48 degrees. From city B to city C, the plane flies 8,100 miles at a bearing from 122 degrees. Find the distance in the bearing between city A and city C. Okay, so that's a lot going on. So it says from the city A to city B. Okay, so let's, what I'm gonna do is we have bearings. So I'm gonna draw an X, Y axis, okay? So what I always like to do is kind of start. Do you have room? I got a little room, okay. So we have here city A, okay? Now we're gonna go to city A to B, 65 miles at a bearing of 48 degrees. So again, remember bearing starts at due north. So we're gonna say oh, 48 degrees, okay? That's gonna take us to B. Let's put B right here. Then it says from B to C, it flies 8,100 miles at a bearing of 122 degrees. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another coordinate grid. And now I'm going to do 122 degrees. So 122 degrees is going to be probably somewhere down there. And that's going to take me to C. Okay. And that says find the distance and bearing between city A and C. Great. So that's going to be here to here. Okay. So if, to find this bearing, what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for this distance and I'm looking for this bearing. Now, the cool thing is I already have 48 degrees. So I just need to figure out what that angle is. Okay. Now, this is kind of trouble <laughs> if we don't have a right angle. So we better have a right We better have a right angle here because otherwise we're going to be in kind of trouble. Um, so if this is 22 degrees, then what does this angle have to be? Well, 22 plus what equals 180? That's going to be a 58, right? Um, if this is 48 degrees. What does that tell you about this one, right? Because again, notice these are parallel lines. Yes. So notice how what I have here is I have what we call alternate interior angles, right? Remember that? So if there and there, uh, did I have that? Did I write? Yeah, or I did this one and that one. Yeah, alternate interior angles. Uh, what am I doing? Jeez, come on. Right? So what I have here is basically this angle and that angle are equal to each other. So if that's 48 degrees, that means that is 48 degrees. And that, oh, I'm sorry. 48 degrees. No, that is not what I was looking at. That was 48 degrees. That was not supposed to be 48 degrees. That was a mistake then. Because I was trying to make that to be a 32 degrees, which is incorrect. So I made a mistake there. I was actually doing this calculation wrong. So hold on a second. So we're going to change this. Sorry about that. I just noticed I made a mistake when I did this problem. Well, did the problem and created the problem. This needs to actually be a 32 degrees. Sorry about that. Because the reason being is exactly what I was just explaining to you. 48 degrees doesn't make sense. This has to be a 32 degrees because if that's 32 degrees, then that has to be three degrees. And again, like the reason why I know that we have to have that is we have to have a right angle because otherwise, in tr at least what we've learned so far in this chapter, we don't have enough information. Okay. So that is going to be 32 degrees. Okay. The reason why this is again, so important here, what we're looking for is let's kind of redraw this triangle. All right. And actually let me go and draw the sides here that we have. Um, find the distance between A and C. Okay. Yeah. We don't have that. So we have, this is 6,500. Right, and then this was what, 8,100? Okay, so let's kind of go through the angles that we, what we have so far. So let's redraw this triangle. Okay, now again, 32 plus 58 is what? That's 90, okay? So this one is 8,100. And then this side is 6,500, okay? And then this angle, that's 90. So we're looking for this angle, which is going to be a theta. I want to figure out what that sliver is, that theta. Okay. Because if I can figure out that theta, I just need to add it to 32 and I'm good. So first thing we need to do is do the Pythagorean theorem to find our D. Okay. So D is equal to, you know, 6,500 plus 8,500 squared is equals D squared. So that equals, say, 6,500 squared plus, say, 8,100 
squared. Okay, so just go ahead and type that into your calculator and you should get D is equal to a 10,385.567 meters, depending on how you want to approximate that, which again, like makes sense, right? Because if that's 6,000 to 8,000, right? And that should be 10,000, hypotenuse should be bigger. And we wanna make sure everything's in meters, which is our final answer, right? Or miles, I'm sorry, miles. Okay, now to find this angle though, Again, I need to look at this and say, all right, what information do I have? So I need to say tangent of theta is equal to an 8,100 all over a 6,500, right? So when I do that, and actually I've got to calculate this. So that's going to be a tangent inverse of 8,100 divided by a 6,500. Make sure you're in degree mode if you didn't already, because yeah, okay. And that is going to give me a 51 degrees, okay? Now, again, though, guys, that's not my bearing. My bearing is going to be theta plus 32 degrees. So the bearing is going to be a 51, sorry, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 degrees. So my bearing now is going to be a 51.25 degrees plus a 32 degrees, which is now going to give me a 83.25 degrees that is going to be my bearing. 